Hi, I'm Bob Batcher, the Executive Director for Prime Plus Senior Centers, and this is Prime Time with Bob. And I'm with a good friend, Michael Candlewall, who is with the Muse, but also the uh, Norfolk Arts Commission. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. It's nice to see you. It's really nice to see someone's face that's moving, you know, uh, <laughs> and that we can talk and interact. I, I, uh, I, you know, even though there's, I think everyone maybe has Zoom fatigue at the same time, it's nice to actually interact with somebody um, at the, you know, live. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's well, nice. have you had an old fashioned conference call lately? I have. I've had it's some. really weird because you're not getting the, the nonverbal stuff. Right. Right. So if someone rolls their eyes or whatever, you okay, can't. I'm going to ask you a personal question. Are you dressed for Zoom or are you dressed for the day? Both. Um, I'm dressed, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I wore a shirt that was, I thought, nicer than I would normally wear for like this lounging around in the office with no one here. Um, but it's also cooler. It's, it's a thinner shirt. So I, I anticipate having to be outside some today because of my father's car. My is having some trouble. Um, so I might have to wait for a tow truck outside. It's, it's <laughs> remarkable how um, we've adjusted. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, humans, I, I mean, for all the things that humans are, and there's a lot of uh, maybe some not as nice things that we do as a, as a, as a, as a species, but there's some really nice things we do too, which is come together, which is adapt, uh, which is support each other. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's the, the better angels of our nature, right? So yeah. I think the adaption to things works because we, we just want our lives to be as easy, I guess, is what we, we want. And so it, this is the way to do it right now. If we want to have the really needed social interaction, we, we use technology. And yeah. imagine if this coronavirus had happened 15 years ago. <gasps> um, it would be, like you said, all conference calls. Yeah. Um, and and people using modems and maybe like dial up to communicate with each other or or the infamous um, you know letter that takes two weeks to get delivered well it didn't used to yeah right. <laughs> that's true so Michael um, you're on the the, uh, the Norfolk Arts Commission yeah I'm a commissioner on the Norfolk Arts and Humanities Commission so what I'm does that mean? so um, commissioner so the Arts and Humanities Commission in Norfolk much like many cities have a commission of a similar nature and, and most states do as well. And of course the federal government has the NEA. What we do is, is really we, we're there to support the arts. Um, so in Norfolk, we, we um, offer grants to arts organizations that are based in Norfolk or have uh, primary programming in Norfolk. Um, and, and we're looking for ways to um, help those organizations fulfill their mission. And in, and in this time, uh, we're also looking for ways to support them in any way we can to make um, the next, you know, two to 12 months um, sustainable because, you know, a lot of these, a lot of the great organizations that do a lot of wonderful work in Norfolk, uh, of course, there are some very large ones, but there are also a lot of very small ones that rely on volunteers that don't maybe have a staff uh, to salary, but they, they pay their, um, you know, the teachers or people who do arts education programming uh, as independent contractors. So they might not have been necessarily eligible for all the PPP grants because that's usually for salary support. Although some of them I think are for independent contractors as well. Anyway, so, so we're, you know, we're, we're just trying to work within what we've been given from the city, which of course was cut about 25%. It, but, it was, but, but it was almost cut completely. Completely, yeah. So. And this happened a couple of years ago as well. Um, the uh, before I was on the commission, I heard that they had eliminated all of our well, they had reduced the funding and eliminated the job of the one employee from the city that shepherds us. And we did a, a pretty massive campaign uh, to the city council, people writing letters, and we got all that funding restored. And then this year, the same thing kind of happened. It was on the initial budget; it was zeroed out for us. Um, and then you know with different commissioners, uh, you know, contacting the council people we know and also the, the, the community, the citizens of Norfolk um, reaching out to the council, showed them how that would really be bad for the city. It's not that it's just bad for the organizations or bad for, you know, our grant budgets, but it's, it's bad for the quality of life in the city because 
you know, the, the 30 or so organizations that the Norfolk Arts and Humanities Commission funds, and of course doesn't fund completely, this funds, you know, between two and 10% of their budget. They do such remarkable work in the community, um, giving light in times of darkness to people, um, being a beacon of the arts, um, after school programs for kids, um, uh, after school programs, for adults, <laughs> I guess you're not well, called after school programs. In, in, but... full, in full disclosure, you guys help fund a program that we have, and that's uh, our coffee and chat with Steve Kolb. And there have been times where, through this time, even me, have been kind of down and out. And a Thursday morning oh. hits at nine o'clock, and I tune in, and there's Steve playing some good old standards, and and I f play it the rest of the day on record because it makes me feel better. So yeah. the arts, the arts, I mean, they were get, they were going to deliver the blow because even with right. the large arts organizations, their traditional delivery of art has totally changed. Well, so I think for everybody, <clears throat> um, so like we go back to what we were saying a second ago. So the Norfolk commission with the Muse Writers Center helps yeah. fund a lot of our outreach programs, a lot of our youth programs. We, so we go into um, uh, senior living uh, places and do creative writing work with them. We go in we, to military and veteran groups. Uh, and we also go into at, with at-risk youth and schools. So, we, but we also have, uh, you know, uh, classes that were normally held in person at the Muse Writers Center. We have switched all that to online platforms for the time being. Um, and we also had 400 events throughout the year. Some of them reading, some of them uh, author book launches, some of them uh, celebrations of, of, of different kinds of creative writing. Um, some of them social and networking, and those are a little bit harder to do during COVID because um, I think it's not safe yet for us to be together in mass, even though right. some projections say that, that's loosening up, but there's, it's also spiking. Uh, but we've been able to push some of the uh, outreach that we've been doing. We've had some with the youth. We've had some with um, a couple um, assisted living and uh, retirement communities. Um, and the military and veterans has actually been not so bad to transition because a lot of them have more access to technology. So the big thing that I think the Muse and also many of the smaller and, uh, and larger organizations, and I'm sure you, yours as well, are finding is a technology gap. Mm -hmm. So a lot, of, a lot of the grant funding we'll be uh, hoping to get this year, we'll be looking at ways to get you know, inexpensive uh, laptops, or Chromebooks, um, so people can access Zoom uh, you know, access Google Meet Ups or Teams or yep. WebEx or whatever, so they can join in in, in the in, in classes and participation and events and stuff. Well, we're we're in the process now of kind of surveying our members to see who has technology and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. and what I'm finding is, you know, grandson gave grandma a laptop and it's become a good TV tray right. because they're intimidated by it. I mean. You know, I, I usually confess something on one of these conversations, and I was supposed to have been recording and broadcasting our exercise class this morning, but because it was a little different, I totally screwed up and didn't figure out how to do it, and I just finally oh. gave up. And that's kind of what we're dealing with, is how do we prevent people sure. from giving up on technology? Well, my mother lives in a nursing home, and um, I haven't been able to see her in person, but I have done some window visits, which is nice. Um, and I dropped off. So Did she you yell at her through the window. No, it's she, she. They actually bring. They built a little thing outside under a covered porch where there's a plexiglass, almost like booth, that she oh, cool. rolls into with her wheelchair. And then I'm on the other side of the booth, and and we 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 talk through the plexiglass. Although she's a little hard of hearing, so we use <laughs> phones to help that out. Um, and of course, we were going to have one last. Uh, week, but it was too hot. She didn't want to do it in the heat. So we're hoping that this Thursday will be better. Um, it's not going to, of course, be cool, but it'll no. be not, not 100 degrees. Um, but they have been outfitting uh, people there with technology. I know that one of the places we have a outreach program in for the Muse, uh, they have a person that's trained everybody how to use Zoom. And, and now they're, you know, because they, because some of the people who were in the creative writing group that we were hosting there, um, we're kind of like, we need this back. So yeah. teach us how to use Zoom. And we're like, we love that. So Michael, I'm, I'm one of those guys that um, when somebody says, right, even though I've been in PR, I, I immediately think of the giant red pen. <laughs> and 
And then when I went through school, it was like, wow, you could do a whole lot better than this because you didn't structure this and you didn't do that. But let's talk about that story, the importance of writing yeah. down the story. Isn't it more important than grammar? Sure, it is. And, and so let me just back up and say that the Muse Writer Center is a creative writing center. So we don't really do academic writing. So we don't, you don't have, have red them. pens. Uh, well, there are red pens of, uh, around. I, I, I like red pens because my mom was a teacher, right? My mom was a, a, a college professor, and I used to love helping her grade her tests, her most really? tests, in, when I was three or four years old. And she had this red felt, pep, felt pit pen, and I just thought it was the coolest thing. And so I would help her grade her multiple choice <laughs> sociology and, and public health exams for ODU. Um, so when I was, I think, four or five, I asked for red pens for Christmas and I got them and I was very excited. So I'm, I'm a weirdo in that, in that case. Um, so, so divide. It's here you are now. But really, what, so what we do is we, we have classes in poetry and fiction and nonfiction and memoir, songwriting, screenwriting, food writing, and a lot of also seminars for writers to improve different elements of craft or professional development, like how to get an agent. But we have introductory classes all the way to professional level classes. So in the introductory classes, um, let's say like you were mentioned telling your story. So a memoir or creative nonfiction type class. Yeah, it's really about getting words on the page and not worrying so much about making them perfect. Because as you might know, whatever we think of in our minds is perfect. It's the story in our minds is perfect. And the, the problem comes in translating that into language that, written out on a page. So as you get to a higher level in our classes, there'll be more feedback, uh, you know, with a red pen perhaps, or a blue one or a green one. Teachers have different colors. They like some, I've seen some with purple pens. Um, but uh, yeah, grammar is not, it's important to, it's important because you want to convey what you want to convey in a way that's understandable to others. But really, I, I, I always tell my intro students when I used to teach the intro classes, that the best way to hear those kind of line editing uh, changes is to read it out loud to yourself. And, and you'll, you'll find what doesn't sound right. And that's probably because there needs to be a comma or a period or moving words around. We, we had, a, we had a, um, somebody come in and do a class on telling your story. And I was, okay. I was blown away because I, uh, I heard their stories. And what I realized was that where I thought Prime Plus connected people because we were here in this building that I, what I discovered, it was the stories that connected people. There was a woman who had breast cancer. I could relate to that because my mother had breast cancer. There was another one who took care of his son while his wife worked second shift. And it was an absolute disaster. I could relate to that because when my wife worked at Walt, at Kmart, I took care of the kids and it was an absolute disaster. Sure. So those stories are so important. And even in COVID times. Well, yeah, there's a lot of stories. Sure. I think people can tell a lot of stories about this time um, but also, you know, like we have a lot of people who tell stories about growing up in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, um, the, the, how society was changing with, you know, the war experiences. We do a lot of things with veterans and military folk um, and their families and caregivers as well. Um, or, or just, you know, or, or in the more modern context, everyone has a good story no matter what, a, you know, what age you are. I think some people are thinking, oh, you write memoir or nonfiction when you're retired and and you know when you're trying to pass things down to your grand grandchildren and great grandchildren and that certainly is true but I, but you can have a 25 year old telling a compelling story in there as well because they've gone through something in their life you know uh, overcoming uh I, you know whatever they might want to have overcome uh, perhaps there's there's problems with not problems but there's overcoming gender issues or overcoming family uh, trauma. Um, we actually also have some classes occasionally on writing about writing through trauma and grief. Oh, wow. Those we found to be a little bit harder to do online because the personal connections a little bit needed there. But we do have a class we put on the schedule for the summer called um, I think using writing as a way to heal your grief. And it's a one meeting seminar on August 8th with a very great writer from the Baltimore area named John Dadakis, who's won many awards. He was a journalist on CNN, he's a novelist. And, and when I put that on the schedule, I thought oh, that would be a good class. And now I'm gonna take it because I, as you know, my father passed away recently, not from COVID, uh, but it was a little bit unexpected, the timing. Yeah. And you know, it's hard to deal with that. And it's great 
to have something artistic to use to heal and express. And I think that's what so many, going back to what we're saying about the other organizations in, in Norfolk and the state and the Commonwealth of Virginia and all over the country, um, art can be a source of joy. Art can be a source of uh, entertainment. Art can be a source of meaning. Art can be a source of healing um, for yourself or for this community or for um, your family. Um, and Michael, the, I hate to country. do this. Great stuff, but guess what? Technology is going to shut <laughs> us down. Okay. So I'd love to keep this conversation going. So let's look at some things that the Muse and Prime Plus can do together virtually. That'd be wonderful. And awesome. and you know, anytime you want me on here, I'm happy to do it. I love I love to uh, uh, chat with people let's, who I like. Let's do it, Michael. Thanks for everything that you guys are doing at the Muse and at the Arts Commission. Thank well, you. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful afternoon. Same to you. Keep in mind, stay safe, but stay connected. Thanks a lot. Absolutely.